Happy Merry Christmas to all of you. Today, here in Sweden, it is Christmas. We celebrate on the 24th and not on the 25th. So, this year, Christmas actually came on the days I usually upload. I hope you all are having a relaxing and a cozy cozy time together either by yourself or with your families I got this really really cute Christmas apron that is way too big for me I need to tailor it a bit it was a one size fits all but apparently not if you are small so, today I wanted to give all of you a Christmas gift that have been requested a couple of times and I thought it would be perfect to give it to you today on Christmas We're gonna go through the Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team Corp this is a thinner Warhammer booklet and not the big core book I have because it would be way too long and I have some other plans with it Warhammer is a fantasy universe I'm really in love with reading about the lore, the stories I don't paint or play with any Warhammer figures because it's really really expensive and if you might know I'm trying to save up for either a house or a cabin so I'm trying to be a bit frugal with my spending but I hope you will sit back and relax and enjoy the Christmas together with me Thank you So this is the Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team Core Book First we're gonna read together some of the backside Elite Warriors, Dangerous Missions and the Fate of Worlds in the Balance It is a dark and terrible age the Imperium of Man battles for survival against foes beyond count. Upon countless worlds, the fires of war burn bright and the cries of the damned echo to the heavens. Admit the madness and the horror. Elite bands of killers stalk through tangled jungles and ruined cities, claustrophobic tunnels and blood-splattered trench lines. These are the kill teams, hand-picked squads charged with the completing the most dangerous and difficult missions. The lives of millions and the fates of entire war zones hinge upon their deeds, for these are the messengers and the assassins, the protectors and the scouts whose efforts can spell the difference between a spectacular triumph and an apocalyptic defeat. Ordered up to battle by charismatic leaders and made out of specialist warriors, being a plethora of pow powerful weapons, each kill team survived to overcome its rivals and achieve victory at any cost. Kill team. We have the contents Welcome to the kill zone 10,000 years of war Core rules Open play Match play Specials narrative play Appendix Blank narrative data card I think the most interesting parts Are the lore you get Within the 10,000 years of war In the 
grim darkness of the far future, millions of souls march hopelessly into the fires of war. Their lives are merely meat for the grinder, fodder for callous lords, pawn for laughing gods. When their grievous wounds fell them, fear and madness take them, or the abyss claims them, these unfurnished are lost to an uncaring galaxy, their efforts unrecorded in the pages of history. But this is not the tale of the forsaken multitudes. This is the tale of the few that made it through. With grit and determination they faced the horrors of the galaxy, earned honors and scars and wore them with pride. They shot headlong into the abyss with blades drawn and guns blazing, and with the decisive action they etched their names into the pages of history and shaped the fate of the worlds. Welcome to the Kill Zone. Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team is a tabletop miniatures game set in the grim darkness of the far future. You take control of a team of highly trained operatives conducting vital and dangerous missions against their rivals in an action-packed skirmish. Each mission is set in a deadly environment called a kill zone, and kill teams must master this to operate. Key mission actions and objectives need completing to achieve victory, but doing so in the crosshairs of the enemy's guns makes it a risky proposition. Combining bold tactics and strategy with the ability to adapt and react is the key to success. So prepare yourself for a firefight like never seen before. Your group of skilled deadly operatives are your kill team. So you will soon discover that this means so much more than a collection of miniatures to play the game with. Each kill team is a faction's ultimate tool for skirmish warfare, and as you use them to complete dangerous operations, they will begin to take on a character of their own. Memorable acts will be remembered as your operative forged their personality, charging the enemy's gunline, shrugging off grievous wounds, and incapacitating foes with the swing of a blade, taking hit after hit, becoming injured but holding on long enough to secure a vital objective, lining up the perfect headshot and downing an enemy with a series of critical hits. In Kill Team you will experience these cinematic moments at every step. Here we can see some of the miniatures. Your Citadel miniatures are reduced components with which to play the game. There are a collection of characters. The protagonist of your tale, the heroic or infamous individuals you will become attached to as they conduct missions in the grim dark universe of Warhammer 4000, and collecting them as such is all part of the fun. The more games you play, the more personality your miniatures will take on, bravely weathering the enemy's offense to perform a vital mission action, defying the odds by fighting a more powerful foe in combat, or using stealth and kill to sneak on an adventurous position. Your operatives will earn their fame through their actions on the table. And what better way to celebrate this than making them look like they farmed the operatives they are. And here we have some examples. Sergeant Sawtooth Wern is the leader of Worm Sappers. Sawtooth earned his name from a lengthy campaign on Vrax. There his chainsword would often be heard from the trenches performing its grim work in no man's land. The victim, any enemy infiltrator, unfortunate enough to be caught by the search knot. The commandos of the brutal boys called Dirk Schluck Pocketis, a lazy kid, a once, as once he found a good shooting spot, it doesn't move for the duration of the mission. While that might be true, 
When Dirk opens up with his scope, Big Shooter, the boys quickly stop complaining. Sergeant Renal is the impassioned leader of the ancient ardent kill team. Through cunning adaptation and unbridled determination, operations involving the Angel's Ardent are frequently successful, yet their mission logs are regularly redacted by the chapter for undisclosed reasons. Superak's grand nose corruption can begin anywhere. As a member of the Viroland band, he and his fellow kill team members seek to purge their enemies entirely by contaminating supplies, sabotaging life support, machinery, and infecting vital systems. As all crumbles to ruin, the virulent band emerges victorious. Gaming a game of Kill Team is an action-packed back-and-forth firefight in which players must make key decisions in every activation. Engaging your enemy is a sure way of gaining dominance, but doing so puts you at risk of return fire. Therefore, players must balance their offense with the needs to conceal their operatives to keep them alive and secure better positions. This is some beautiful art. This is what makes me fall in love with this universe. It's really grim. 10,000 years of war. One cannot consider the fate of a single man, nor ten, nor a thousand. Billions will live or die by our actions here, and we have not the luxury to count the cost. Inquisition. Crypto. Forty-first millennium. In the forty-first millennium, the galaxy is riven by apocalyptic war. Planets unnumbered are consumed by the raging inferno, and armed conflicts between huge armies, even as their skies churn with the city-killing energies unleashed by vast fleets of starships dueling for control. To be a soldier in such an unimaginably devastating strife is to be one amongst countless billions, yet they are individuals nonetheless, and it is by their actions that the enemy are slain and territory is seized. Humanity's dominion in these times is the Imperium of Man which stretches the length and breadth of the galaxy, its worlds through numbering a million or more are spread thinly across the galactic stellar disk, each an isolated flickering candlelight in the infinite darkness of space. Many are snuffed out by mankind's marauding enemies each year, and in the same time many more are newly colonized. So vast in the Imperium that most Imperial citizens have little, if any, knowledge of the wider galaxy. They do not need this knowledge to perform their function, whether this be to tend colossal fungi growth in angry world's cavern, you or from rope in suffocating mining tunnels or carry out back braiding shifts in ammunition manufacturers. They need only and do they need only do and know a few things. They must praise and thank the god emperor of mankind. For without him, humanity is doomed to extinction. They must work tirelessly without complaint, for the imperial war machine must always be fed to assure survival. The imperium of man is cruelly totalitarian, and the individual's worth is measured in their ability to contribute to the survival to the race as a whole. And for the great majority of their lives are seen as utterly expandable to those in much higher tiers and authority. The horrifying reality is that without the Imperium, mankind might already be extinct. 
to survive at all in a galaxy full of horrors, creatures and truth so terrible that knowledge of them should shatter the sanity of the average person. Humanity must be as its most brutal, uncompromising, draconian war. There are few, if any, who can escape the 41st millennium incessant catastrophic warfare for long. Peace is near for a golden term, and to some in the Imperium, the very idea of it is a heresy in itself. War is the galaxy's, galaxy's only constant, the singularity around which almost every deed, conduct, and revolution resolves, however, indirectly. The war of the Imperium fights is one of both for survival and dominance at the same time. The Imperial Creed preaches mankind's superiority, and that of the galaxy is its inheritance. Yet, many are those alien races whose mere existence is a blasphemy, and whose actions obstruct humanity's rightful claiming of the stars. The Imperium must raise armies of trillions to stand against the endless hordes of orcs and tyrannids, who bring slaughter on an unimaginable scale, wherever they go. Imperial forces are expected to keep in check the arrogant ambitions of the Tao, prevent the enigmatic schemes of the Aeltari and meet the metal phalanxes of the megalomaniac Necron lords. Imperial servants ranging from high enforcers and the Abdeptus Arbites to space marines and Abdeptus Custodes must put down every rebellion and uprising, for the perfidious traitor and heretic will stop at nothing to see humanity brought to its knees. They must stand up to them all and win, but all this is impossible without the ability to navigate space. The Imperium built fleets of enormous warships to cross the void amid the myriads of threats that dwell in the dark between the stars. Kill teams. Though many of the galaxy's wars are vast. In each conflict, countless kill teams conduct missions of enormous variety to tip the balance and secure victory for their side. When they're specially formed for a specific task, gathered ad hoc, as when required, or thrown together by the whims of fate and fortune, their actions are an integral part of the war in the 41st millennium. No matter the scale of war or battle, Victories are won by individuals who pull triggers, plant explosives, swing blades, throw grenades, fire missiles, storm bunkers, and push detonation buttons. Nivea, Kill Team Roach. On Armageddon, after the forces of the Earth, enemy burst onto reality following the emergence of the Great Rift. The death corpse of Krieg is stationed on the world real swiftly. The 411th Siege Regiment was performing essential fortification work in Hive Infernus at the time. Within weeks, a number of blood cults had been identified in the Hive, their numbers growing rapidly. General Wund Klaub, commander of the 411th, ordered of scores of kill teams to put down the cults. Sergeant Rauch commands one such kill team. Renowned for giving hundreds of his troops glorious deaths, he takes pride in never learning the names of those who serve under him. Besides earning a glorious death, to him they have a single role to play as a part of his squad's mission to slaughter cultists, whether they found 
and the Raj leadership. His communications have coordinated with other kill teams to wipe out several cults in their entirety. His demolition experts have destroyed dozens of altars and his zealots have, ce have ceaselessly preached the imperial creed. A warning to all citizens of Hive Infernus that turning from the Emperor will be punished swiftly. There are a lot of lore from different stories of different kill teams within these books. I think this video will be way too long to read everything, but I hope you get something out of this for relaxation. Theaters of War Much of the galaxy burns in the fires of war. At any one time, the roar of weapons, fire, and the battle cries of combatants can be heard across planets and moons of all kinds. Kill teams fight in almost every environment imaginable, whether it be blistering inducing rats on tratophenic mountain regions, ice wind swept tundras, city sized sewer networks, or colossal fortification complexes. Any battlefield has its own suit of dangerous challenges. Are those conditions as well as great opportunities for kill teams to endure and exploit? Some more really beautiful art. Kill zone. Hive. Asherov. Hive Asherov is the primary hive city of Ryatov Theratius, third world of the Ryatov system. When Commander Shadow Sun led her fifth sphere expansion into the Kalnath expanse, she directed Commander Darkstar to bring the Ryatov system into the fold of the greater good. As was customary for any fire caused leaders, Commander Darkstar went to great length to persuade the planetary governors of the Riato system to yawn the Tau peacefully. Water caused and voice delivered beautiful speeches that highlighted every boon and benefit of belonging to the fledging but rapidly expanding empire. Thrusted humans gave moving testimonies of how their worlds and their own lives had been transformed for the better by becoming allies with the Tau. Darkstar was not foolish or naive, however. He had seen many worlds refuse the Tau, their allegiance, and through it saddened him deeply, knew it could well happen in his system. Even as the negotiations continued, he ordered operations that would either move discussion in Tau favor Prepare the ground for military conquest. Forces of the Imperium The vast military might of the Imperium is drawn from numerous different branches. Each has its own histories, traditions, and methods of waging war, particularly hated foes and combat styles. All can point to enormous campaigns and battles. Their warriors have taken part in going back thousands of years and all each in their own way utilize small groups of warriors to accomplish vital strategic goals. Adeptus has drafted Astra Militarum, Adeptus Auroritas, the sisters of battles. I really enjoyed these. Adeptus Mechanicus, Adeptus Custodos, Grey Knights, Imperial Agents. Here some of the different types. Adeptus Astraries. The Space Marines are used to fighting in small self-contained strike force and are well versed in the tactics of squad-based warfare. Every battle brother brings his own skills and strength. 
in the Austrian military room. Austrian military room kill teams wield their best weapons and war gear that reg regiments can offer. Some are formations of crystal veterans trust to undertake important missions. Others are ragtag survivors banded together in desperate times. The Adepta Sororitas For the kill teams of the Adepta Sororitas, the Holy Trinity of Bolter, Flamer and Melt applies even at the smallest scale of warfare, lending them a diverse range of tools for any task. Adeptus Mechanicus Whether gathering data, seeking out lost archaeotechs, or simply eliminating their foes with terrifying ruthlessness, the augmentic warriors of Adeptus Mechanicus the kill teams go about their holy work, chanting static rhythm psalms to the machine gun. Custodies. The enemies of the Emperor are as widespread as they are diverse. Thus have the Adeptus Custodies been dispatched as they over the galaxy, breaking up into smaller forces to put down threats before they are, arising full assassinating influential cult leaders or destroying unholy relics of formidable power. Grey Knights. Although few in number, Grey Knights' kill teams are expected Professionally powerful combatants, capable of and driven to achieve any mission they are assigned to. Armed with an array of physically charged nemesis force weapons and sanctified bolters, they can sky through hordes of foes and duel with the most elite of opponents. Forces of Chaos Heretic Astraries Chaos Demons Death Guards Thousand Sons Renegades and Cultists the Chaos Gods. Chaos Space Marines. Heretic cast where skill teams vary enormously in compositions and purpose, depending on which trade or legion or renegade chapter they come from, as well as the malefic will of their champions. Some are elite killers selected by their lord. Others are survivors of warband devastated by conflict and seemingly cursed by the gods. Then we have the Chaos Demons. No one can truly comprehend the motives of demons. There are no blasphemous horror they will not commit, no extreme level of bloodshed they will not delight in. Materializing from the warp through tears in the real space. They distort the fabric of existence around them and erode the minds and souls of those who look upon them. Death Guard Death Guard kill teams stride through enemy fire and weather weapons blown with impunity. Praising their deceased patron as they slaughter his foes and spread his gifts. Death Guard legionaries fire volleys of bolts onto the foe who drown them in dulces of liquid pestilence before carving them apart with brutal sweeps of their heavy plague knives. A thousand Sons The unimaginably complex schemes of the Thousand Sons sorcerers means there are Always vital task for Thousand Sun skill teams. Experts in reading the schemes of fate and masters of deepest lore, the Thousand Suns are experts in outwitting their enemies. The Ancient and the Eldritch the galaxy is home to complex Xenos species, each utterly different from the next. Most of these are utterly hostile towards the Imperium and vice versa. Some are comparatively young and dynamic, while others are ancient and malevolent. 
dating from the earliest prehistory of the galaxy itself. Azeriani, Drukhari, Holy Queens, Orcs, and Necrons. Azeriani. An Azeriani kill team is made up of a number of elite specialists, each impeccably trained in a very specific way of war, whether it be the furious howling banshees or silent ambitures of the striking scorpions. Drukhari Drukhomorath is a realm rife with fierce rivalries of Renderas. Most are put aside during raids. Kill teams in a Drukhari onslaught are fiercely competitive cliques and deprived killers and elite fighters drawn from different subcultures of Drukhathan society. Harlequins Each Harlequin troop is a kill team in its own right. Using the secret labyrinth dimension of the webway, they strike across the galaxy, attacking critical targets with immaculate timing. Their attacks are mesmerizing, display of aerobatic leaps and lunges, punctuated by rapid graceful swords and blows. Necrons Necron kill teams fulfill the myriad wishes of their many maniac overlords. Their endurance and their relentless Storms of atomizing gas energy they fire make them ideally suited to conventional military tasks such as divisionary assault or the capture of well defended strong point. And orcs. The, lead, the leader of any orc kill team is always either the most cunningly brutal or the most brutally cunning, becoming the boss through bullying and threat. An orc kill team might have many things it wants to do. Clobber the biggest enemy boss they can find, nick prize loot from another tribe, seize a particularly powerful enemy vehicle, or sneak into hostile territory to blow up as many things they can. The Savage and the Strength With each passing year, the Imperium encounters new Xenos threats. We tear at mankind's realm with tooth and claw. Using bizarre and hideous technologies, they cross the stars and fashion armors of devastating weapons with which to destroy human worlds. Most insidious of all, they come with the blasphemous ideologies and noxious lies that threaten the integrity of mankind's faith. We have the tyrannids, gene stealer cults, Tao Empire. Gene Stealer Cults Right from the inception of the Gene Stealer Cult, its kill teams are at work. They prepare for the cult's eventual uprising by infiltrating defense forces, secreting weapons in hidden locations, disabling infrastructure and carrying out other acts of subterfuge and sabotage. Tyranids The bestial horrors of Tyranid kill teams prepare as a prey world for the invasions close behind them. In the first wave, they infiltrate cities and fortresses, weakening, wreaking havoc. These tyrannids undermine defense and sow fear, creating a pandemonium that is all but impossible for its defenders to contain. The slaughter patrols shoot through the cabling of shield generators and cut down sand. are highly adaptable and fluid fighting formations who act as a microcosm of wider Tau war machine. They prioritize swift movements at all times, launching flanking attacks, counter maneuvers and sudden ambushes with overwhelming superiority of firepower. 
Shasui or Shas Red take shots, directing strike teams, team warriors to provide cover fire. Guided by the marker lights of pathfinders and accompanied by artificially intelligent drones for the close assault specializing breaches. Core rules Warhammer 40,000 kill team is put in command of a hand picked squad of ardent operative order to execute final missions in the deadliest environments. Over the following pages you will find rules to use to your Citadel miniatures to recreate the intense combat experience of the 41st millennium. So the rest of this book is actually used. How to play the actual game, I guess a lot of role playing as well. It's not only the lore from the previous pages, there are some tools of war and about the dice, data cards, battle structures, turning point, initiative phase, strategy phase and the firefight. Warhammer seems like such a fun game to get into. First of all, I don't have any friends with common interests of playing games like this. Not even board games. But it would be so fun to actually get into one day. But I would really like First of all, to buy a carbon. We have charge, fall back, dash, pass, forward, pick up. Do any of you actually play Warhammer? I know there are a lot of you who would enjoy me to make more Warhammer content. I'm planning on doing a series with the lore, not the actual strategy of how to play the game since I've never played it. Maybe you can play it by yourself, but it's... I don't know. I guess I'm too shy to find other people to play with. There's a lot of tactics now to play this game. Wounds and damage. All operatives have a certain number of wounds that are used to measure how much damage they can sustain before losing effectiveness and becoming incapacitated. Each time damage is inflicted on an operative, it loses a number of wounds equal to the value of that damage. Line of sight. The different kill zones. Terrain traits. Heavy, light, traversable, insignificant barricades. We have vantage point. Moving throughout terrain. These miniatures are so beautiful. Like the people who spend a lot of time to paint is amazing. Here are some example boards. This is an ideal setup for a kill zone. It has numerous terrain features and a variety of terrain traits, allowing players to make crucial decisions on how their operatives will interact with the kill zone. There are plenty of opportunities to keep Operatives out of line sight, as well as key positions establishing fire lanes and engage the enemy. Finally, it 
creates an exciting and dynamic battlefield that can set the scene for an intense skirmish between two forces. looks like a fallen town and someone has been biting on these pages I wonder who that can be example terrain feature I have not seen a lot of people actually play or paint with the forest aspects. It's usually within cities, I think. Industrial structure, monitorium container. And there are some different ways to play. Once you have familiarized yourself with the rules presented over the preceding pages, it's time to wage skirmish warfare with your upwards in a game. Games of War Arm, Warhammer 40,000 kill teams are categorized by three ways to play. Open play, match play, and narrative play. So we have open play, match play, and narrative play. Open play. Traitors are dug in, well supplied and heavily armed. They think they're an assassin. What do you say, brothers? Shall we disabuse them of that foolish notion? Alfrish, Wyrm Slayer, Space Wolf Certain. Open play mission sequence. There is a lot you need to know about. For you who are actually into playing a lot of Warhammer, how long did it take you to fully develop understanding of the gameplay? I know when I did the video of the World of Warcraft the adventure game, the first board game I ever had a look at, it took me too long to use real the little rule book. And I mean this is a core book. That is about this thick with this much information that there are several for Warhammer. The universe of Warhammer is so great and large. Match play. As our bodies are armed with adamant, our souls are protected with loyalty. As our bolters are charged with death of the Emperor's enemies, our thoughts are charged with wisdom. As our ranks advance, so does our devotion. For are we not the space marines? Are we not the chosen of the emperor, his loyal servants unto death? Chaplain Fergus. Nils. Here's some of the match roosters. I wonder if you would actually have to fill this in during game or if it's just like a role play set up to feel more engaged in the game. I wonder how long a game of Warhammer would take. Spec Ops narrative play. As the claw father commands mages, I will bring judgment to this false prophet. He will know no safe heaven, let the enemy surround the wretch with as many guns as they wish. It will make no difference. There is no corner of this hive the spectre of cause cannot reach. When at last my blessed knife is at his throat, he will die as he lived, screaming his prayers to an uncaring god. By the star children, I swear this. Yagus, there no wind. Coil. A coil it I come word. It's so hard to pronounce a lot of these words as a Swedish person. Tongue twisters. Is that 
during this pick up campaign experience. Casualties, strategic assets, requisition, pick ups. There's a lot of information. A narrative play mission sequence, critical operation mission. Awaken the data spirits. Escalates, escalating hostilities. Seize grounds. Domination. Secure or chaotic. Duel of wits. Most determinals. Tapos. These are used like different words explained. Different data cards, and markers, and tokens. My camera is actually dying right now. I don't really know what the issue is right now. So I hope you did not mind the ending was a little bit rushed. There's a lot of things I don't understand as a non-player. I just really enjoy Warhammer for the lore. But I hope you enjoyed this video anyways. And I hope you have a merry, merry Christmas. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your day.